Is that music on? Hello and welcome to the 2023 Julius Fair Sao Paulo E Pre Pre Drive Pre Press Conference. Uh, for the drivers joining us, we have Stoffel Van Dorn from DS Penske, Luke Segrassi from Mahindra Racing, and Sergio Setti Camera from Neo Pre 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 Racing. Welcome, guys. And um, starting with you, Stoffel. Compared to some of the races at the start of the season, you've managed recently to quietly kind of be, get better and better performances out of the car, making up positions. Do you feel as if you've been getting more out of the car and being able to extract more out of the car? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the, the very start of the season was obviously a little bit difficult for us as a, as a team and uh, we didn't really do a good enough job to, uh, to get the maximum out of, um, out of the car. But um, yeah, recently it's been going, uh, going a lot better. Um, you know, Jeff's been on the podium two times uh, in a row now in India and, and Cape Town. Um, and, and I would say from my side, I think just uh, quite a few small things just haven't been falling into place, but uh, it's still, you know, we're still making steps forward and uh, that's, uh, that's encouraging and I feel like, uh, you know, I just need a kind of weekend without, uh, kind of just a smooth weekend, let's say, and then I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be, yeah, we'll be in good shape. You, you seem to struggle a little bit in qualifying whilst your race pace has always been very good. Um, how do you think you can improve the consistency and work with the team to help match the performances that we've seen with Jeff so far? Or is it, like you say, just a, a small matter of things changing? Um, well, I think the, the cars are quite different to, to last year, obviously, especially the tyres. So that's one big thing to you know, get your head around and understand qualifying to, to maximise that. Um, but also, you know, from, from kind of a run plan point of view, we maybe haven't uh, done done our best, let's say, in the in the first couple of races. I think last race we actually had very good pace in qualifying, just a little bit unlucky with the red flag mm -hmm. in uh, in Cape Town. So yeah, just meant we had to start a little bit further. So that's why uh, I'm telling just a, a clean weekend would be yeah would be good for us to see where we are. So 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 far we've seen three new venues back to back now, starting India, Cape Town, now here in Brazil. Um, what are your experiences been like visiting and racing in, in the new cities that we have so far, as well as your opinion on adapting to those new circuits as well? Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be in Brazil. Um, you know, it's a, a country that uh, has a, a great amount of passion for, uh, for motorsports. So, you know, I'm very excited to be here and, and to be racing here. Um, you know, I guess for Lucas and, and Sergio is the it's always very special to have a, to have a home race, so I think Formula E should uh, get the race in Belgium very soon as well. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, I like discovering new circuits. Um, looks like it's quite a particular one here. Uh, some very very long straights. Um, not quite sure what the grip is going to be like, but it looks uh, yeah. So far, it looks um, it looks good. Okay, and moving over to you, Lucas. And um, firstly, let's start by just acknowledging the fact that we are finally getting to race in Brazil here, you know, with you, have you been here since the very start of the, of the championship? How has the whole experience been so far? You know, because it's not just about the last few days, it's been months and weeks building up to now. Well, first of all, uh, um, love to know everyone. Um, it's a, a huge honor to be here in my hometown, in Sao Paulo. I, I grew up here, I started my career here. Uh, my family is still here, my kids were born here, so. Um, having this race is very special. We worked very hard uh, for for my year. Worked very hard to have a race here for now ten years. The first time a race we announced was here mm. was a uh, Rio, was Brazil, but it didn't happen. And then kind of went through. And after nine years in Formula E, I was like at one point thinking I would have not be here to to race in the Brazilian E Prix, but it's finally happening. So. Kind of closes the cycle of being able to race here in Brazil in Formula One, then uh, World Endurance Championship uh, in LMP1, and then also now in Formula E. So uh, it's great to be able to do that in front of my friends, my family, and all the, the community of Brazilian motorsport fans. I can imagine. So when you look, just kind of furthering on from that, when you look at the growth of Formula E in general and, and the recent racing in new markets and then racing here for the first time. How important do you think it is for the series to be venturing into these new markets where motorsport is so predominant? Well, uh, very important. 
India, for example, is a market on its own. It's almost two billion people. So almost uh, India is bigger than Europe, US, and uh, Brazil combined. So uh, India is a great was a great first race. A lot of things to improve, but in general, there was a lot of people on the track, generate a lot of media activity, and so on. Uh, and because of Mahindra, also, it was a very good time to race there. And Cape it was a fantastic event, full. Uh, everybody liked it, the, the atmosphere was great. Here, I think it's going to be similar, hopefully, the same atmosphere as Mexico, which is another huge race of Formula E. So, these markets. Uh, these new markets with new fans and new people that like motorsport, uh, it's very important to grow the sport. Um, and Brazil was particularly bad uh, uh, in terms of uh, how people in general saw Formula E because there was a lot of trouble with broadcasting, there was a lot of trouble with we didn't have a race here. So even with uh, like with big names racing like Felipe Massa and Senna and PK and Nars and myself racing and Sergio now in the last uh, two years, but I'm talking about the long, let's say, five, six years ago, mm. still didn't manage to break through the Brazilian market. And I think now with this race, the timing, the maturity of the market, the maturity for electric, I think it's, it's going to be very good um, the next year's year. Having Great. So moving on to the racing, well, they haven't been perhaps the results you've wanted in recent races. You have shown some consistency with where you've finished those races. What do you think you and the team need to do to start building on improving the performance? Well, we, we started, well, everybody was kind of finding their ground. We were very quick in Mexico with the pole and the podium. Since then, we've made big steps with the car, but uh, we were a bit, a, a mixture of bit unlucky and not having the performance. But in, uh, in, uh, in Hyderabad, which is, was our last race, if you discount Cape, that we had a problem with the suspension. Sure. Hyderabad, we came from the back of the grid all the way to top six, uh, with very good pace, fighting with Pascal the whole race. And because of this crazy, I would not even say crazy, I would say very bad policy from FIA on the penalties. Uh, could be even, I could even name it worse than very bad, but I won't do that. Um, <laughs> we lost a lot of points. Uh, so I think that the car is not the fastest car on the grid, the car is not the most efficient, but it's competitive. If we manage to get everything right, we can beat the other guys. And in this track, because of the characteristics of the track, I think the racing will be very tricky because of the slipstream, the strategy, I think it, uh, the heat, I think it would be very, uh, it, we could have an amazing race here and we try to seize the opportunity. Good to hear. And, and I'm finally moving on to you, Sergio. Similar to Lucas, you're competing on home soil in Formula E for the first time. What does it mean to you to be racing here in Brazil in front of the home crowd, have your family and friends all coming along? Uh, so good afternoon. Uh, of course it means a lot to me. I've never, I've done a few uh, amateur races in Brazil the past uh, decade, um, but since I have moved to Europe to to join the Junior Series, Formula 3, Formula 2, even before that, doing karting, there's no major events, international events uh, in Brazil. Uh, also, I spent some time doing a reserve driver role in Formula 1, but it never was uh, coming to the Brazilian race. Uh, I went to other routes across the world, but not to Brazil. So it's a first uh, big race here for me, and it's a new experience. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, entering a question, but family, friends, people that that are so close to me, but that never have seen me a race uh, live, right, at the track. And I'll, I'll have a bunch of them here. They're coming from Belo Horizonte, which is an hour flight away. Uh, some friends as well here from Sao Paulo, and I'm very happy about it. You mentioned earlier on the track walk about we didn't know whether uh, it would feel like extra pressure or whether it would feel like a chance to relax. What, if you could remind me what you said at the time. Hey, I, I said uh, that it's always a trade-off because, you know, in other tracks when you go to, for example, Cape Town, I know nobody in Cape Town, you just show up there, go to your hotel room, go to the track, you don't have to worry about anything, and you race. So from point of view of, like, complexity of the weekend and how you have to organize yourself, it's just much easier, right? Uh, here I have a lot more duties with sponsors, with the media, with uh, organ managing people. So um, it, it adds a, level, a layer of complexity to the, because you still got to be 
fully rested, focused on the racing, which we're here to do. Uh, but it comes with the reward of having the good company, the energy from the people around you, and, and that has definitely been uh, very big. Good to hear. Now, having joined this, the series back in 2020, what has your experience been like in general of how the events and the new lo the race locations have grown, particularly over the last two seasons? Um, yeah, that's one of the big uh, added benefits for me from like, like the amount of places we visit and we race. I do think some consistency in, in the rounds would be good just to create some fidelity of the public. Um, the, new, the new rounds have been just so good. I, I really like Cape Town in Brazil, but it's not my favorite, of course. I, this structure here for me is incredible, uh, of the IMB uh, park. And uh, it's good to, to go to new places. Uh, we'll see as well in the United States, the trading between New York to Portland. I hope it's a good one. New York was an incredible city, but it was a bit too much cramped up for us, uh, the space. Um, but once we find our places in the world, let's say as a championship, I hope we you know, remain relatively stable, just to create a, a tradition, a fidelity of the public, that people make that connection uh, every November or whatever month we have that race here. Like in Brazil, every November, people already, they have an, alarm, an internal alarm clock that it's the Brazilian Grand Prix. I think this is important for, for the, having the public and creating the culture around uh, Formula so just looking briefly at uh, the racing and, the, and your car, the Neo 333 team, along with the teammate Dan, um, has seen great one lap pace, but then struggled slightly in race conditions with the efficiency. How much do you think can be done to match the quality performance to the races? Is there still more that you can extract from the efficiency at this point? Um, we've seen a lot with what Lucas mentioned earlier about the, the strategy and the, the drag following cars ahead. This has been a big player. Seems like when you just uh, make a, a big gap to the car in front, at least for us, it's game over pretty much. So um, that has been very important. Um, and here Brazil will be particularly important. And we do seem to have a competitive car. I was not in the team last year, but it was a big step forward. They were consistently in the back. Uh, I was racing in, in Dragon last year. And um, I remember Neo was less competitive than us. And this year, Neo has made a big step when we when everything goes right and we do have a clean weekend. We're fighting for top ten results, even well inside the top ten. Then finished six in Cape Town. I finished fifth in India. They were uh, races that had a uh, um, some uh, you know they, they were a bit unusual. Cape Town with a sixteen car starting the race that's unusual. The Mahindras, you know, power train did not start, and then India was a messy one as well. So we do need that that element of luck, but. You know, if it's a clean one for us, we're in the ballpark top 10, and then with the element of luck, we can even uh, flip the top five uh, like I did in, in India, which is a massive step forward. Very rarely you see a team go from last two positions in the grid to then inside the top 10. It's a very quick transition, and they've done a good job on that. Well, we look forward to seeing how it unfolds. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm afraid we don't have any questions from the uh, time for the questions from the floor, but the media pen will be taking place 